Hey, what's up, guys? It's your boy, The Fights, back at it with another video. But if it's your first time here, definitely be sure to hit, hit it, hit that subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think. Come join us on Discord. It's the best community ever. Come follow us on Twitch as we stream live as well as on YouTube. Last but not least, we don't have YouTube monetization. So if you wanted to support the channel, uh, check out that YouTube description below. We have an Etsy storefront link. We have coffee mugs and t-shirts and more things on the way. So let's get into it, guys. So this video is about uh, the hidden potential system, uh, hidden or potential system to be exact. Um, so what I want to do is I want to discuss uh you know the the inner workings of it uh how does it work this is kind of like a ground up thing i want to make it a separate video from another one i did because um there can be some complexity to it i want to give you my frame of thinking and uh and why i do things certain ways so you guys can get an idea of why we do, you know why i'm i think like that and why I do things a certain way and it might help you guys in the future when you guys start to deal with stuff like that so let's start talking about the hidden potential system what is it so the hidden potential system basically is a way to increase the hp attack defense and then all the attributes uh like from the super attack doing more damage to more defense uh based on what type attacks you or whether you have a higher chance of doing crit to ignore defense or getting a chance to do an extra attack uh and so on and so forth and each of these stats basically they give you the dialogue of what are the things that are related to them so um while you're going through the trees and i actually missed one which i'm gonna do right now because i actually use this lr uh ultra instant goku a lot so i definitely want to make sure that i get them as much uh, get as much stuff as i actually can so you can see that we kind of just updated like one thing just to kind of increase the level for it so these little orbs here costs are the you know you actually use little orbs to um to basically um you know pay for them and then for the other ones you kind of use whatever the mix is so like let me go to a character that maybe i didn't put any points in so i'm gonna try to see who uh, i didn't put points in i probably didn't put points in this dude did i i actually did I, he's at the 75 percent mark oh so but look here so like a perfect example so if we go here we see that we consumed 15 small orbs yep yeah so it kind of shows you 15 small orbs, 15 medium orbs, two large orbs. And then if I go another one, it doubles. Then I go another one. Wow, that actually became more expensive. So on and so forth. So it kind of shows you like, and then if you look at the top up here, it shows you how the stats are increasing. So if I take it away really quick, this is where the current stat is. So then when I do it, it went to 45. So it gave 100 on attack. And then this one gave 100 on attack. This one gave 100 on attack. And then this one is going to give 200 on defense. And this one actually gave 600 on health. Um, I can't believe I actually missed those, but it's so difficult to see them from time to time. So I'm not surprised in a sense. So I'm going to actually consume those. And now my character is actually a little bit stronger. Now, one of the main things I definitely do want to talk about is uh, the paths to unlock and how do you know which ones to go for and so on and so forth and i'm going to give you my rule of thumb and my thought process so then you can make those type of decisions on your own as well and and to be honest like there is there is a cookie cutter way of kind of doing it but there also are other ways where you know you can kind of make the decision on your own now it doesn't break the the character in its entirety like oh my god why did you do that and stuff like that there are sometimes better decisions but it's not like a crazy um it, it honestly like the character is still going to be really good but sometimes it could be a little more optimal if you choose the right things so let's go into these so if you're looking at like when you actually get into the hidden potential orb system and you say pick character if you see the ones that are highlighted with that blue aura there, that means that you actually have duplicates of the card to unlock potential paths, which is really awesome. So like, here's a perfect example. So this guy right here, I have the potential capability of unlocking this, 
But the problem is, in order to do that, I first need to doke and awaken him to this state so then the card can understand it. Because there is no UR state in this first one. There is a UR state here, so I would have to at least grind these 10 metals, doke and awaken them, and then put them into the potential system. But it is telling me, hey, you actually have a baseline of this card that you can use. Sometimes you can reverse doke in them. In this case, because this first one, this first combo doesn't have a UR state, you can't digress it to then put the path in. I'll show you an example, if I can, of one of the cards that are like that. So if we go to the, the potential system, we go to pick a character. This is an example. I don't want to do it because that's a free to play card. I'm trying to find a better one. If I can't, I will do it for the video. If I can't, I will do it for the video. Let me see. All right, guys, I am back. I was doing a little bit of work before continuing the video because I needed to get these cards to kind of show you. And I've, I, if I was going to reverse Doken Awaken something that's free to play, I figured let me get the remaining cards. And okay, let me explain what reverse Doken Awakening is. So if we look at this card right here, this card is already Doken Awakened. It's in its most powerful state. But in order to unlock the path for the card, I need to put it back into this state, this UR state right here, because it's over here. So I need to use an hourglass that you grind for to reverse Doken Awaken it. And it, it has that capability. So the game has actually, over the years, it has become much smarter. So when i want to unlock a certain path so let's zoom out just a little bit this one is i need to unlock this path right here so i'm going to click it and it's going to say unlocking path and it's uh, it's going to show like hey there's no carrot well hold up let me see it's going to show hey there's a character here i'm like all right cool but it gives you uh a warning saying you know Use the character below an incredible hourglass to unlock the route. So it's going to basically weaken it. It's going to make it weaker. So it can get this. It could be the same card image slash card type again. And then it's going to be able to unlock the path. So it comes at the cost of using an awakening metal. Um, so we're going to say, yes, I'll do that. So now it's back in the weakened state and I was able to unlock it. Now before, so we just, we, we weakened it. We reverse awakened it using the hourglass. So now while it's in this state, I'm just going to finish it and get that part done. And now I'm going to actually make it strong again because I have 100% fully unlocked. So if I wanted to, you, you know, start navigating to these to start going through it, I can do that. So let's click on this real quick on that name. I'm gonna go to growth. I'm gonna say reverse doke and awaken. And you see here, it's in this weak state now. We're gonna put it back to normal because we doke and awakened it. So now we're gonna make it strong again. And that's the, that's the little weird n niche when it comes to reverse awakening something because you have to put it in the weaker you are state because that's how you get the base card form now you can use you can get that card and then grind it all the way to the to the other doken awaken state but that's a waste of stamina so don't do that and a waste of metals so using the hourglass to go backwards to unlock the paths is the better route um Depending on how many you have available, I obviously have 171. Um, so I'm able to do that. Or is it saying that there's 171 cards available? Because the other thing said that there were like 10. I don't know. But I still have a decent amount. So I'm okay with it. Um, so now uh, the next piece I want to talk about is we talked about the complicated one first. Let's talk about the simple one. Because that will just probably make sense to you. So there was another card I actually grinded for us. That's why I stopped the video briefly and resumed it. If we go to physical, super, it's a Namekian. It's a, it's Piccolo. So this is a this is an example. So if we go here, 
I have not Doken Awakened this card at all yet. So I don't need to reverse Doken Awaken it. But I have two duplicates here. So I can basically just normally put the path in. And the one you always want to go for first, guys, is the bottom one. The bottom one has a lot of utility here for these options. Um, the only thing is, in order to traverse all the way down here, your super attack has to be 10 to maximize it. Um, if your super attack isn't 10, then you're not going to be able to navigate it. But this is like the most powerful section here um when it comes to all these other ones usually people prefer to go to the two top ones um but i am very situational based on the class but first let's just do it away let's just uh unlock the path here so because it's already the same card type image blah 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 i'm gonna be like yep unlock it boom i'm not even using an hourglass because i didn't it's an i don't have to reverse anything and then i'm gonna see what I like to do is I like to read the stats of the finished card, like the card all the way at the end, whether it's an L when it's an LR, when it's a UR, so on and so forth. So it says extreme damage to enemy and greatly lowers defense. Sura transforms, blah, blah, blah. So when you use 14, okay. So now if we go to the passive, defense plus 70 for all allies. This is a very defensive card um it doesn't have any perks in regards to uh stats of attack so personally th this is my preference i would go to defense for that based on just what i read there so i'm actually going to do that you know a lot of people are like no you should go for one of the top ones i'm like no i i read defense there so i'm gonna do defense another card that i'm that i did the same exact thing for was the uh the agl frieza so, so let's take a look at that really quick and this is i'm guys like honestly like i said it's not a make or break thing when it comes to doing some of these things um it's just some some cards are better paths to do certain things so if we go to the agl frieza where is he i should be able to find them there he is so if we go and I'm just going to click him. I'm going to say, okay. I went to defense. If we read his stats, like causes supreme damage to enemy for the attack. Okay, cool. But then I go into the details and I read the passive. And the passive to me says, reduces damage received by 80% when HP is 50% or above. So there's two ways to go about this in my eyes. One... You could go for the top left one, the HP, to increase the, the size of the health pool. So you can stay longer at 50% because you have more HP to drain. Or you can increase his defense. And by reading that passive, that's what I take for it. Uh, another example uh, of like a decision that you would make is uh, if you would look at like the, the physical... The physical... Um, Gogeta, not Gogeta, Vegito. Let's look at the physical Vegito. I rainbowed him, actually. If we read his stats, say I say he wasn't rainbowed, say he wasn't rainbowed, and we're looking at his stats. Um, and it says here, attack and defense 40% at the start of turn, great chance of launching up to two additional attacks, each of which has a medium chance of becoming a super attack. Damage received from normal attacks minus 40% and counters with tremendous power. Now, because he counters on regular melee attacks, you'll want to probably spam um, crit damage. I should actually change this because this is how I did it in the past. But what I would do is I would increase the crit damage all the way because every time you do a counter, you have a higher chance of critting someone. Uh, the additional tax already happened in the passive, so me doing that probably isn't great. I didn't have a better orb at the time for the skill orbs a long time ago when they first came out, and I just threw it in there just for him to have it. It still is fine, but like if I wanted to do something a little more that would be nice for counters, uh, increasing the crit all the way up so it can happen, uh, that's something that you can do. So, But in the case of the orbs, to go back to this, which path would I go first? I would first go to the bottom right path, and then the next path would be straight up attack. 
I would go straight up to the top right path because this is the attack one. The way you can tell which path is which is based on the middle unlocking. This one was the big fist, so it shows attack. This one over here on the top left is the HP. And then this one on the bottom left is the defense. Um, and then this one is the health, but this has a lot of these other perks, which is really nice as well, which I really do like. So that that's my way of assessing the orbs and which ones I go for. So like you see, like I could put, I don't I don't care too much because this card is still overpowered for me. So I'm not going to sacrifice these. I'd rather use the points on other ca cards. Um, but like when you see this go for crit if you see this one this one is like dodge or no you, you're not gonna dodge you want to get hit so you can counter so go for the double attack so this one over here go for crit you don't want to dodge so, uh so on and so forth this one i should change to crit um so that that's how i do it now like over time i've kind of learned from things and i kind of assessed like these are some of the things that i might want to do might not want to do so on and so forth but this is the hidden potential orb system and uh and i hope i was able to give you kind of a a guide so then in the future you guys can make those conscious decisions on like yo what should i do what should i do should i like if i'm looking at an lr card so a perfect example is let's uh let's go over here uh what i would do usually now is perfect example let's go here i see this card right here so i read the the stats for this in the beginning and i see that it says like you know attack and defense 120 reduces damage by 30 so he is kind of tanky that's pretty awesome plus an additional one key sphere team medium chance of launching an additional super attack cool that's pretty awesome but when you're looking at lrs or any cards like this i i highly suggest that if there is a special extra um condition set that can activate like special fusion also read this as well when you're looking at the hidden potential that should drive which direction you should go because this is going to give you way more information and you might need to cater to it based on how this is so it says and medium chance of performing a critical hit counters normal attacks with tremendous power same thing as the physical so you're gonna want to go stacking crit because once this person turns into this he crits really good it's pretty awesome actually so i hope this gave you a lot of insight on the thought process you know what to do uh what's reverse doken awakening why do you have to do it what's a regular um unlocking of paths what's you know like all these things i hope they kind of gave you insight if you guys have any more questions definitely leave in the comments below i'll be sure to see if i could follow up and i've if uh you guys have any um ideas of what you would love to see next let me know but i wanted to give a thorough guide of like okay so what are these these are the orbs these are uh, the type of things you can do. These are the passives that you can see for the character. You can make a decision. Um, then what are the big skill orbs, so on and so forth, that you can kind of put over here to increase the stats significantly for the character. And these, these skill orbs, these major ones, are really good. If you haven't seen our video on how to um, farm these orbs, definitely be sure to check that out. Um, but yeah. I think uh, I gave enough information. I hope you guys uh, enjoy it, and I will see you guys on the next one. Take care, guys, and peace. Let me know what you guys would like to see next. I'd love to give you more insight. I'll catch you guys later. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Again, if this is your first time here and you're watching from YouTube, definitely be sure to hit that subscribe button. If you ever come to Twitch, definitely be sure to hit that follow button. Come join us on Discord. The link is below in the YouTube description. Also, last but not least, I want to say major, major, major shout outs to the sponsors. If you guys also wanted to financially support the stream, definitely be sure to check out that YouTube description below. There is a Patreon link. And if you can't support financially, don't worry, guys. There's other ways you can actually show support. That's getting the word out, sharing the content, letting friends and loved ones know about this uh this channel tell them to come and hang out come join us on discord you will not regret it it's the best community slash family ever it says it right there on the freaking board yo thank you guys so much for hanging out i love you guys so much and i will catch you guys next time let me know in the comments below what you would like to see next what you think about the video and so on
I'll catch you guys next time. See ya.